Hello and welcome to this, the first video in a series entitled Into the Archive in which we look through the photographic archive of the Peat Railway Association. In this series we'll select a small range of photographs about one particular subject and arrange them into a slideshow presentation. Where known, we'll give the date and details of the photographer. Our archive collection is built up of many photographs that have been donated over the years and, and they now enable us to show the history of the former Midland Main Line route through the Peak District from where it began in the early Victorian days to now as a heritage railway route operated by Peat Rail. To learn more about the Peat Railway Association, how to become a member and volunteer on the railway, please visit the links in the video description. Peat Rail has hosted many celebrities during its time, but perhaps the most famous celebrity to ever visit the railway was none other than locomotive number 4472, Flying Scotsman, and it's this visitor that forms today's subject. The story of the visit starts not with Flying Scotsman, but with a smaller, less famous GWR Panya tank type locomotive number 9600, and it is seen here around 0730 in the morning at speed through Duffield Station on Thursday the 27th of July 2000. The locomotive was delivering six coaches fitted with both the air brake system used by Flying Scotsman and the vacuum brake system used by Pete Rail. At around 0800 on the same morning we see this unusual train arriving into Matlock Station where it was to make a brief pause before being allowed onto the connection with Pete Rail. The reason for the use of this type of locomotive was restrictions on the types of trains and the weights of trains that could use the Ambergate to Matlock branch line imposed by the then operator of the national network, Railtrack. Railtrack had originally suggested to the operator of the train that they should use a class 20 type diesel locomotive, however the operator didn't have one available at the time. The operator then looked at what locomotives could be used on the Ambergate to Matlock branch line and determined that this little steam engine was capable of doing the move and also complied with all the restrictions on the branch line. Owing to the restrictions on the Ambergate to Matlock branch line, the famous engine itself was unable to be delivered by rail with its coaches and on the same day had to be delivered by road, with the locomotive and tender departing Carnforth in Lancashire at around 0800 that morning, it was early afternoon before they reached Derbyshire. The move was all going to schedule until the convoy was within 10 miles of Peat Rail, and unfortunately, just before reaching the nearby town of Baslow, the trailer carrying the locomotive suffered a puncture which delayed the move by 4 hours. Once back on the move, the escort then missed a vital turning at the nearby town of Bakewell, causing the lorry to head straight for the town's ancient bridge. The bridge would have been unable to cope with the load of the engine and therefore the only option for the convoy was to do a U-turn in the road which caused further delay to the delivery. With the locomotive arriving at Rosley South at around 2100 that night and the tender arriving at 2330, several volunteers faced an all night job to get the engine ready. Here we see the locomotive safely on the then peat rail engine depot at Darleydale. The railway had to order an additional 60 tonnes of coal on top of the normal order for the visit. The coal at that time was supplied by Rossington. The day after the delivery, Friday the 28th of July, was filled with testing of the locomotive to ensure all was in order. Here we see a driver at the controls of the famous locomotive, though sadly on peat rail, not able to do the 75 miles per hour maximum as shown on the cab information above his head. Saturday the 29th of July was the first day of public running with the locomotive and the railway laid on some special attractions for the event including this steam powered carousel and demonstrations by the steam powered crane now owned by the Peat Railway Association. Due to a weight restriction on the bridge over the river just outside the then Peat Rail terminus of Matlock Riverside, Flying Scotsman could not use the bridge to reach the run round loop at the station meaning that the engine could not run from one end of the train to the other. This meant that a flying Scotsman was coupled in top and tail formation at one end of the train, with the then Pete Rail resident locomotive of the time, number 68012, the Duke, coupled at the other end of the train. The Duke is seen here performing the task of hauling the train as far as it was allowed to towards Matlock, and performed this duty on all nine days that Flying Scotsman ran, Hence the need for the coaches fitted with the air brake system as used by Flying Scotsman and vacuum brake system used by Pete Rail. Once the train had been hauled as far as it was allowed by the Duke, 
Flying Scotsman brought the train back to Rosley South and we have this driver's eye view of the train passing under the road bridge at Warner Lane just before Darleydale Station. Flying Scotsman is the only type of the A3 locomotive class left in existence and we see it here passing through the level crossing into Darleydale Station. The only other level road crossing on Peat Rail is at Church Lane between Darleydale and Rosley South stations and we see Flying Scotsman having left Darleydale heading for Rosley South passing over the crossing. At Journey's End we see the locomotive resting at Rosley South station having arrived from Matlock. All the stressful planning and preparation work that had taken place having paid off for this moment. In our last slide of the show we have the opportunity to thank all the volunteers involved in making the event a success as we see a group of volunteers posing with the engine having just made preservation history in getting the engine visiting the railway. If you've enjoyed the video please be sure to give it a like as well as subscribing to our YouTube channel. Thank you.